Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 7 and I'm going to discuss the electric field of a uniformly charged conducting sphere. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com and if you'd like to find news or updates on my videos or my posts you can join me on Twitter at AdamBT503. So, before we continue I need to point out that we're not talking about a shell, we're talking about a completely filled solid sphere. All right. The previous video to this is number 6 where I discussed the electric field of a conducting spherical shell. And for that reason I, I suggest that you look at this video before you look, I will say number 6, before you look at my current video because I'm just going to use the results of video 6 in order to, uh, to calculate, we'll say, the results required for video 7. So in the video on the charged conducting shell we found the following. So we just, we had a a sphere which was a shell of course we defined our z-axis our y-axis and our x-axis and I don't know why I drew this line there All right? and what we did was we measured the electric field at point P above and what we found we, we found we had two things we could measure the electric field at the distance we'll say outside we'll say the shell z greater than r or inside the shell z less than r and we found the following we found that if we measure the field inside if we, if, we, if we measure, if I put point P inside here, the electric field was zero all the time. But if we measure, if we put P outside the shell, the electric field was non-zero. So the point is that you cannot have an electric field inside a uniformly charged spherical shell, conducting spherical shell. Okay, you just can't have it. So how do we calculate the electric field, we'll say, of a uniformly charged solid sphere. Right? Well, how do we do that? Well, we do it as follows. We note that for a uniformly charged shell, the electric field was the exact same as a point charge. So as if as if we shrunk the whole sphere or the whole shell down to a single point charge at the origin and we had the same electric field. So it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q over z squared and it was in the k-hat direction. So I'm just going to say we're talking about the, uh, the that's if it's in the k-hat direction, but in general I suppose you could have it as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q over r squared in the r-hat direction, which just gives you, that's just your arbitrary direction. So I'll get rid of this term here. But if you think about a solid, uh, if you think about a solid, we'll say sphere, you can think of it being made up of lots of thin shells. Each shell contributing a certain amount of charge, we'll say q sub 1 and q sub 2 and q sub 3. So the total amount of charge that's in the, we'll say, solid sphere is just the sum of the charges in each of these shells. So it's, we'll say, capital Q, where capital Q is equal to the sum of the infinitesimal charges. Alright? So, for that reason, we can say we can we'll say we can say that our solid sphere has the same electric field as our uniformly charged shell, except instead of having we'll say a small Q, it's got a capital Q which is the total charge. Okay, full stop. So once again, instead of having we'll say this is this is a uniformly charged solid sphere has the electric field of a point charge centered at the origin. Same thing. Now what happens if we look at inside at a distance inside the shape, inside the uh, the sphere itself. Well, let's say the sphere is this big. Okay, if it's this big, it has this electric field. If you measure it, point P outside here. Okay, and if it does, it has well, it, it's you, it's the same field as a point charge set of we'll say of charge capital Q centered at the origin. But what if instead I ask, well, what's the electric field? inside, we'll say, inside, at, at a lesser distance, we'll would say if I put P in here, okay, well this time the charge that's, we'll say, inside the Z is going to be in here, and all the charge that is now in this particular kind of strip, it's a spherical strip of course, no longer contributes, so no contribution, no contribution in the area in green, and this area here contributes. So really the only difference between the field for the area in blue and the field for the area in green is the ratio of their volumes. Okay, 
So that means, so what the Q internal, or the Q enclosed, we'll say, we'll, we'll say Q, yeah, we'll say internal. Q internal is very simple. It's 4 over 3 pi small r cubed divided by 4 over 3 capital R, uh, excuse me, pi times capital R cubed. So capital R, we'll say, is from here out, that's the whole, that's the whole solid shell, whereas small r is just, we'll say, the radius inside here. All right, so of course that's basically just going to be the ratio of the. Uh, it's just going to be r cubed, small r cubed over capital R cubed, times the total charge. So that's Q internal. Okay. By the way, I should have had a, a factor of Q out there. So that means we reduce the field by you know car to uh, an amount corresponding to this amount of charge. So that means the electric field internal. E, this is out and this is in the electric field internal or enclosed is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 the radius of your internal or your enclosed sphere cubed divided by the radius of your total sphere cubed multiplied by your charge okay but you also need of course remember to, you have to divide by 1 over r squared and have r hat okay so for that reason, you're going to end up with the following. Uh, yeah, you're going to end up with the following. So instead of, note of course that r hat is equal to r divided by the magnitude of r. So if we want, we can write this in a way that I actually I don't particularly like doing, but I'm going to write it anyway, because you'll probably see this yourself. That you can write it as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, capital Q over r cubed r. And this isn't a unit vector, this is actually the direction vector of the field itself. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also click on universityphysicstorials.com.